Hello, good afternoon, good morning, um, everyone. Uh, as I can see that we have now started seeing attendees join in. Thank you all for making time this morning. Uh, it's, it's our pleasure to be here and talking to you about our latest uh, innovation in multi-cloud uh, future, but I'll just probably give another 30 seconds for people to you know, join in, settle in. Uh, for, in a place of logistics, what we are uh, looking at is a 60 minute session. And um, you know, I'll introduce the speakers just in a moment. Okay, now that I can see we have a significant number of participants joined in. Um, again, a quick uh, thank you for making time this morning, uh, people. Welcome to yet another tech drop-in session uh, by Veritas. Today we are talking about uh, achieving your business SLAs in a multi-cloud future. Now the objective of today's session is to give you as much uh, insight around the Veritas technology. Uh, mind you, this is an open forum, ask questions as many as you can. Uh, and you know we will have some time towards the end to take some questions for a broader discussion. So just make this as a more of a technical session with an open-ended platform, uh, feel free to uh, chime in any questions related related to this topic or in general data management, data protection, feel free to chime in. All right, um, Jack, Jackie, if we could move to the next slide, please. Thank you. So today we have with us uh, Jacqueline, Jacqueline, who is a solutions architect based in Singapore. Jacqueline has been a veteran at uh, disaster recovery data availability, as well as, uh, uh, you know, architecting solutions on a hybrid environment. So Jacqueline is based out of Singapore. She's a solutions architect. She's going to run the session today. We also have Vinay uh, and KK. Vinay is um, a solutions engineer uh, based out of Mel uh, sorry, Adelaide in Australia, and uh, KK is uh, in um, you know in in the southeast. So thank you, Vinay and KK, for joining in as well. And Vinay and Jackie are going to be supporting us on the question and answers. Now, as you can see, there is a Q&A section here. Our intent is to answer as many questions as we can during the session. So, you know, Vinay and KK will be responding to your questions uh, right from the word go. And if there are any questions that uh, both of them feel that it's worth all the audience here to be, you know, listening into, then we will bring some interesting questions back into Jackie to talk to them through. So that's pretty much the lay of the land today. Uh, we do have a $25 Amazon gift voucher for the best question asked. So don't ba hold back your questions, make sure that your questions come through uh, straight up. And uh, at the end of the session, we will have a quick round of assessment internally, and then we will reach out to the winner uh, for the $25 voucher. So having said that, I'm gonna start with a quick poll uh, and when, we start, okay, so here is a poll and the poll should have popped up on your screen now uh, where we are just gonna start with some baselining under, and understanding your uh, drivers for choosing a multi-cloud strategy. Mind you, this is a multiple multiple choice option. So if more uh, than one just uh, aligns to where you're looking at, just feel free to pick more than one. So with this, it helps us understand what uh, are the driving factors and motivation that um, you as an organization are trying to aim for. I'll probably give another five seconds uh, before we close the poll. Uh, and I think that's good, Trudy. Thank you for uh, running the poll. If we could have the results now. Brilliant, I think I think we've got an equal split here, guys. Uh, it, it's an interesting yeah, lock-in. The winner though is having a DR strategy in cloud. And again, this is not surprising to me where, you know, we are using cloud platform as, uh, you know, a, a DR strategy itself. And when the cloud goes down, we need to have an alternative, uh, you know, landing zone for our application. So that's good. And avoiding lock-in is also an interesting one. Jackie, I'm sure we are gonna talk about it as we go through. So that's, a quick lay of the land. Now, having uh, seen the result, I'm now going to hand it over to Jackie to take it from here. Jackie, over to you. The sure, stage is yours. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, thanks, Amit. Uh, are you hearing me okay? Yes, 10, 10, 10, 10 on the sound check. Sure, yeah. Okay, is that all right? My audio? Just to check. 
Yes, all good. Okay, sure. Yeah, so, so thanks, Amit, for the introduction. So uh, good morning and good afternoon to everyone. So wherever you are, right? So yeah, today's topic is actually focusing on multi-cloud resiliency. So yeah, so interestingly, I, I, I mean, the, the questions that was out in this first poll itself, it doesn't seem as a surprise to, to us. So basically we're expecting those sort of uh, replies from the audience out there, right? So yeah, so of course, yeah. So so in terms of uh, the, the cloud journey, yeah. So in terms of the cloud journey itself, right? So uh, we actually have taken an extract from this uh, survey report, which is kind of like a state of multi-cloud report that is actually posting out to a number of, of people itself. And of course, uh, based on the statistics, right? We're actually saying 80% of the customers are actually running their workloads in more than one public cloud, right? And of course, uh, there's an increasing number of customers, right? 51% of them are actually increasing the number of their public cloud providers. So th this doesn't come as a surprise. And of course, uh, especially in the last uh, two years or so during the pandemic, right? We're seeing more and more customers that is actually opting for, for more, more than one thing, uh, public cloud providers, right? So in terms of the reasons that was actually out in the poll itself, so in, in terms of avoiding the vendor lock-in and as well as uh, probably of the costing of what the respective cloud providers is actually providing. And of course, uh, being said that 78% of the respondents have actually deployed in more than three public cloud. So they probably, besides the, the big three public cloud providers that we know of, so they actually probably participated in some of the, the public cloud providers in their in-country itself, right? So of course, uh, based on all these uh, statistics that we're getting out of the report itself, so we are also seeing that 70 over percent of the customers are ever increasing their workloads over in the public cloud. Of course, we are being said that uh, cloud journey is easier said than done, right? So I believe uh, some of you customers out there, right, they have already migrated your workloads to, to the cloud itself. So it's never an easy process, right? And of course, uh, based, still based on the statistic from this uh, multi-state, uh, this multi-cloud survey reports that we've gotten. So, out of the respondents itself, 83% of the customers are still using a manual efforts to migrate their workloads in the cloud. So being said that, because uh, there's actually various tools that is out in the market itself. And of course, uh, based on the characteristics of their applications, of their workloads itself, so it's, it's probably not one single tool that actually suits all the workloads that they are going to migrate in the cloud. So of all the different kinds of tools that they are using, customers are also expanding the manual efforts up from the, all these tools itself to do the actual migration. And of course, 96% uh, of the respondents that have actually indicated, they are actually seeing value in the workload portability. So that, that's where they're actually opting for a multi-cloud approach. But of course, 71% uh, are still only in their early stages. And being said that for all these various tools that the customers are using, so it's actually not an easy process as what I've mentioned, right? So, so, so basically out of all these tools, they are, they are actually expanding the manual efforts and all these efforts itself, right? Actually, actually indicate that it actually limits their ability to realize the full potential of the cloud offerings that the public cloud providers are, are being offered. And of course, uh, many have actually seen surprises in their cloud journey itself. So we're actually taking some references from some of the, the, the reports that we have seen in the papers. And of course, uh, some of it actually comes from our customers that is actually not utilizing our solutions. 
right? So one of them is actually a major US airline provider out there. So they are actually migrated their ticketing systems over in the cloud itself. But of course, uh, putting their applications over in this public cloud, they're actually sharing the data across multiple nodes that they are hoping to actually achieve high performance out of it. But of course, uh, being said that, we do know that the public cloud providers do not actually provide a mechanism to share out the data that is actually coming from the underlying storage itself to multiple nodes. So this, uh, this uh, US airline, they're actually using the cloud native uh, NFS approach to actually share out the storage. And of course, when we talk about NFS itself, right? So most of the customers are still using the NFS uh, version three protocol, but of course the uh, version three protocol, as you've seen for this NFS approach, right? The, the, the security is not there, right? And of course, uh, whenever we talk about NFS, right? Customers, even at on-prem itself, customers tend to shine away from it because uh, they do know that the, the incapability of, as well as the poor performance of what a NFS storage can provide. And of course, being said that uh, there's another reference whereby it comes from a major US retailer uh, that is actually uh, having their supply chain software on, on the cloud itself. So they are actually exposing their data on NFS shares, right? So being said that exposing your data on FN, NFS shares might inevitably actually turn to outage, some kind of system outage as well. And it actually goes into some data law due to the lack of banking protection. And of course, uh, we are also seeing one of the APG, uh, the major manufacturer out there that is also putting their supply chain software over in the cloud. So as, as what we know of, right? So all this supply chain kind of software typically relies on a ERP database. Uh, uh, ERP database. So databases like SAP, like Oracle itself. So all this kind of database, right, are utmost very important, very critical to the overall application state. So any system outages that actually occurs, right, for the application, it actually, it will actually bring down the entire application that's causing end users, uh, the customers out there not being able to actually access the software as what, what they, they actually wanted to actually utilize, right? And of course, uh, when we talk about performance itself, right? So for, for customers out there who have subscribed to the storage offerings over in the cloud itself, there's simply so many storage offerings, right? So for example, you have the, the likes of, of for AWS, you have the likes of EBS block storage. You have the, the so-called the high performance storage offerings in terms of SSD, which offers you much more IOP than the standard storage offerings. But of course, if you were to actually opt for a high performance storage, you can see that the cost actually goes up a lot a few times much more higher than what the standard storage offerings are. So typically, so typically this, this sort of uh, storages, high cost itself, will actually exceed the budget that is actually set aside for all these projects, hence also slowing down the migration of the actual workloads over to the cloud. So that brings us to the second poll question, right? So yeah, so what were the root causes of the applications that we have seen on the cloud platforms? Cool, cool. Thanks, thanks, Jackie, for uh, bringing up the question. It's and it's an it's an interesting position, right? Where we have all acknowledged that we are no longer dealing in a single cloud environment, and we are also now aiming, I, I believe, you know, the transitioning to cloud phase has now matured to a point where, you know, we are comfortable running our revenue generating applications on a cloud platform, though, you know, though we have not spent years and years in that mod model. So that's where, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting position to be in. And, you know, we would want to know 
that when you have put your production or even non-production applications in the cloud, what sort of failures or degradations have you observed and what were the root causes? I mean, I mean it's, it's, you know, it's again a multi-select, could be all of them, but what were the major ones that you can recollect? That's, that's where we want to, you know, utilize this information for the next few slides. So I'll probably give another five seconds uh, before we can close the poll. Uh, again, no right or wrong answer could be all, or could maybe maybe there are no faults at all. But you know, we just want to know how things come through. All right, thanks, Trudy. Uh, we can close the poll now, and if we could see the results. All right, so we are actually seeing um, application compatibility issues being the highest but not very far from that is manual error or you know something which is done by accident so jackie i think this lays a good lay of the land or you know foundation for our upcoming conversation back to you yeah, yeah that's right yeah yeah thanks amit yeah so yeah so so, so it's, it's actually uh i would say not interesting right to see the, the responses that is actually posting up from from you guys out there right so of course, uh, being said that, uh, I've also seen like fifteen percent of the respondents, right, have not encountered any errors so far. So that that is of course uh, not surprising. So probably uh, the time has not come yet. But of course, yeah. Being said that, uh, what we want to actually tell everybody, right? So this is actually a reality itself. So of course, uh, I think all of you guys out there, right, needs to understand. And know that cloud is actually a shared responsibility model, right? So just as what you have your workloads at on-prem previously, right? So you have the server, the storage hardware, your switches out there, right? As well as the OS offices, all these things. So it's all managed by your operations team, right? So every single thing, whenever there's any issues, the folks are there, are right there at the data center to actually assist and look into whatever issues that will arise out from any fault of all these underlying compute resources. But of course, when you put up your workloads over to the cloud itself, so one thing to note that in terms of what the responsibility of the cloud provider actually caters for, they are only responsible for the servers and storage because ultimately it's what they provision out from their data center or hosted data center. So the physical networks that they put out there using the, the typical uh, network switches. And of course, uh, the hypervisors that they actually put up on the, the servers itself to made out of the, the, the so-called the virtualized, uh, the VMs instances that customers can actually can actually provision out from it. But of course, uh, one thing to, to actually note that is that ultimately it's actually the customer's own responsibility. So in terms of the data as well as the applications that is running out on, on this infrastructure that is actually provided by the cloud provider. So you're still actually owning the sovereignty of your data right the manageability of your applications so in terms of anything goes wrong right so all this monitoring will not be able to be provided by the cloud providers right so of course uh, in terms of what we are saying that falls short out of the cloud offerings is that three areas right so one of the areas is of course uh, in terms of resiliency so of course uh, we, we do understand that some of the cloud providers, they actually ties up with a specific provide, uh, uh, provider or, or even that you're actually using a native offering that is actually catered up from the OS itself. So typically some of these uh, solutions, so in terms of the clustering solutions that is providing the resiliency, right? Those are actually very complex and of course hard to manage as well, right? And of course, uh, being said that uh, they have also very minimal fencing, right? So in terms of the arbitration, in case if let's say you go into, <coughs> excuse me, yeah. So if in terms in the events that you go into a sleeping condition, so there, there isn't any so-called independent arbitrator out there <coughs> to indicate so uh, which which nodes 
or which which set of nodes actually got the rights to own the controlling of the data itself. And of course, uh, there's always the patching and updating issues, right? So of the questions that was actually posted in the second poll questions, so we do see that a well, probably like 50% of the customers actually encounter errors of their, due to, uh, for their applications over in the cloud due to all these uh, error, errors, errors that they actually put up in terms of, of the applications itself. And of course, uh, in terms of performance, right? So as what I've mentioned just now, so in terms of the standard storage offerings, so they might not be able to meet the needs, the requirements of what your applications actually wanted out from, right? So you'll be actually opting for a higher performance uh, storage, but of course uh, the cost itself is actually not cheap, right? And of course, uh, we are talking about all these shares, right? So in terms of that, if you want to actually share out your data to multiple nodes for your applications itself. So if you're actually opting for a mechanism like NFS or CIFS, so you're actually putting out all these open shares at a risk in terms of security itself. And of course, for network portion, right? So of course, uh, all these uh, cloud providers out there we will just provide the standard sort of uh, network offerings, right? So from the traditional commercial providers out there, right? And of course, uh, if you actually want a more redundant sort of uh, network out from the, the applications that you put out onto the cloud itself, they might not be able to actually provide you with that sort of, that sort of uh, mechanisms that you want out of it, right? So ultimately, these three areas that we're looking at simply means that there isn't any mobility across the cloud providers. So whichever cloud providers that you want to actually fill over or migrate across your applications to, there's simply no cloud mobility itself. Of course, if you subscribe to a, a offering from, from AWS itself, they're not going to say that they're going to work with Azure, right? To actually port over or migrate your data across. So all this responsibility actually lies in you, the customers yourself, right? So of course, ultimately, right? Uh, only Veritas Info still can provide in terms of your successful journey to the cloud transformation. So the three areas that we talk about, so in terms of application resiliency, so. In terms of our solutions itself, so we have all these uh, agent templates that is able to actually monitor and manage the state and characteristic of what the applications are doing, right? And of course, uh, in terms of performance itself, so so if you talk about sharing your your data across multiple nodes in in the cloud, right? You are not able to achieve it, so you have to opt for NFS. But in terms of what InfoSkill is providing, so we have this thing called the, the, the flexible storage sharing. So whereby the underlying is actually running on cluster file system. So it's able to actually share out your data, right? Just by a single standard mouth point itself across the multiple nodes. Whereby you're actually able to achieve the utmost uh, performance that you want to actually get out from running your applications in the cloud itself. And of course, in terms of network management itself, so for InfoSkill solutions, so we actually provide multiple layers of redundancy to the networks that, that you want to actually establish the connectivity within the multiple nodes. And of course, uh, being said that for all this application, be it whether it's application storage, uh, be it whether it's of the network itself, so we actually do have the mechanisms to actually monitor in any case, if let's say a failure of the resources happens. So of course, coming back to the three areas that we spoke about just now, right? Where cloud offerings actually fall sort of. So in terms of resiliency, right? So InfoSkill have this, uh, this mechanism that is actually termed as the, the intelligent management framework itself. So for customers that have actually utilized our info skill solutions that on prem, you will know that this capability that we have out from info skill, right? 
is not based on a time-based <clears throat> polling mechanism, <clears throat> but rather itself for whatever resources that you have within your workloads. So being whether it's <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. So be whether it's on the OS or be whether it's on the the, the, the hardware, the, the network itself, right? All these resources need to be registered, right, within the framework of this uh, capability. So in case if there's any events or any state of the resources actually get changes, right? You will immediately get a notification out of it. And you can actually look into it immediately, right? And of course, uh, in terms of robust fencing, right? So again, for customers that have actually utilized our solutions, right? Out from be it whether it's the Veritas cluster server or the cluster call systems. So you do know that we actually have this IO fencing mechanism, whereby our IO fencing, right? So not just depends on these resources. So we also do have a server-based fencing mechanism, whereby this, this server-based fencing mechanism can act as an independent arbitrator or the arbitrator out there, right? To actually decide whenever if let's say there's any events or speed brain condition. So they will actually determine, right? Which nodes or which set of nodes actually will, will, will win the majority of votes. And then, yeah, the confidence level is there and we'll just maintain the application to be continued running on that particular node or that set of nodes itself. So all these things are actually aligned to the SLAs that the customers are actually expecting out of. So in terms of performance itself, right? Okay, so I would say that InfoScale is highly performant, right? So in terms, in terms of any customers that have actually again, utilize our InfoScale solution at on-prem itself. So you can be assured, right? So regardless of what your underlying storage performance is, so you can be assured whenever your application is running on any of these storage providers out there, right? We're able to actually cater for the same kind of performance as what you have seen. So over in the cloud itself, right? So be whether you are actually opting for standard storage offerings or be it whether it's the, the SSD sort of high performance storage. So we actually do ensure that the applications will still be having the same kind of performance as it is. Because of this, this uh, capabilities that we have as well called smart caching or in terms of uh, this smart IO, right? That we're having out of info skill, but by it's able to actually cache Right, the data in a right in a right back cache mode. So in a way that you are able to actually fetch your reads and writes right out from this cache, right? Such that it actually provides a, a faster, faster manner to actually retrieve of the data that you actually wanted to process. And of course, uh, when we talk about this sharing of cloud storage in this cloud providers itself. There isn't such kind of mechanisms, right, that is offered out from the native cloud providers whatsoever, right? So you actually need to use a third party <coughs> solution. So there we have, right? So in terms of, of InfoScale itself, so we have the clustered file systems, right? So we can actually utilize this flexible storage sharing mechanism whereby it's able to extract, able to extract the multiple storage offerings that you're subscribing to. To, to which you want your applications to reside on, we're able to actually combine all these underlying storage into a logical data point, right? And serve it out to your multiple, uh, to your applications that is running on multiple nodes out there. And therefore you're able to actually, uh, able to get a near zero RPO. So in terms of other capabilities that we have out for InfoScale, so natively, we also provide the replication mechanism as well, right? So when it comes to network portion, right? So of course, uh, in terms of InfoScale, like what I've mentioned, so we have this intelligent management framework. So in terms of the network layers, they are also being registered into the framework itself. So in case if let's say there's any any uh, ditches in terms of the network connectivity, right? So they will actually trigger the necessary notifications for you to actually take note of, right? 
And of course, uh, we're also able to provide a redundant network. So in terms of the multiple network links that you are able to establish within the multiple nodes, within the environment, right? So ultimately, all these things, right? What we're providing is, is also of a low latency interconnect between the various nodes itself. So of course, uh, like what we have actually mentioned so, so, so far, right? So InfoSil actually does support thousands of applications cutting across the major cloud platforms itself, right? So for customers that have actually utilized they have put out their applications on AWS, for example. So we do have the specific agent, right? Templates to cater for the resources that the cloud provider is providing. So that actually gives the assurance for customers, right? That we are actually working and tying our InfoSkill solutions integrated seamlessly into the cloud provider's platform. So of course, in terms of mission critical applications, right? So some customers, right? They are still hesitant of putting out their mission critical applications at, over in the cloud itself. They are still probably still putting it out at on-prem. Still probably still wanting to actually migrate it over to the cloud itself. So in terms of the cloud infrastructure, right? So in terms of the infrastructure, right? So yeah, so we are actually putting on the, the same kind of, of concept over in the cloud provider. So if you are looking for a local HA, right? Just a, a, a simple standard clustering solutions that you want out from your applications, right? So we actually do actually provide the local HA within the same cloud itself. So over here, we're just referring it to Azure, for example, that you are running your probably your, your SQL database or whatsoever that you actually is running on multiple instances out there, right? And of course, in terms of that, if let's say you want to have a, a higher HA, right? Availability for your applications, you can actually put out to multiple regions within the same cloud. So, the, so in terms of cloud providers, right? So there's some kind of pairing mechanism, right? Between the different regions, uh, uh, between the different countries itself within the same regions, right? So if you want to put out your applications to fill over across different regions within the same cloud itself, so we actually do provide the capability. So it's something alike to an on-prem, right? Where you have your production site being your primary site. So you also do have a secondary site that is running as a DR site. So you can be assured that whatever applications that you're actually putting up, running on your production site, will actually be filling over in a seamless manner across to the DR site as well. And of course, when we talk about what area DR, right? So this is where our topic for today is all about. So across multiple cloud service providers. So if you are looking at putting out your applications to Azure for today itself, so as time and time goes by, right? So you actually don't want to, to lock into a specific vendor. And you are also scared of all these outages as reported in the papers as what we are seeing, right? Of course, uh, probably once, once in a bloomer, right? That actually states uh, that, that actually states this particular cloud providers is having an outage. So what can you do about it, right? Because for you as a, a, a a company, right? Enterprise company, right? So you are providing some kind of assurance, some kind of satisfaction to your customers out there. So you also want to assure that your applications is running at an utmost uptime, right? So that's where you want to subscribe to a different cloud providers and be able to migrate or fill over your applications from one cloud providers to another cloud providers. So all these capabilities, right, that we know of, right, is actually achievable by InfoScale itself, right? So for, again, for customers that have actually utilized our InfoScale solutions, so you can be assured, right, that uh, we actually do support heterogeneous platform. So even in the cloud itself, whichever resiliency that you want to make out of it, right? So in terms of the, the fault detection that we talk about, the, the intelligent management framework, 
And of course, uh, we do have all these agent templates to cater for the characteristics as well as the state of how the application is actually reacting to as well. So underlying for our solutions, we also do provide the replication need, right? So of course, they said that if you want your data, right, to be seen as similar to what you're having at one cloud provider, you can actually replicate the data just by using our Veritas volume replicator, right? So ultimately the business value that we're showcasing is of course to reduce the cost, right? So I believe that is what is important to most of the companies out there, right? By maximizing your, your investment in the compute and storage resources that you are subscribing to a particular cloud provider. And of course, uh, putting out to the cloud itself, why, why are customers doing that? It's all about agility, right? So ultimately, right, what you put out, you definitely need to actually reap the profits out from, right? So definitely you want to grow the revenue, right? When you actually transition to this new, new sort of uh, technology over in the cloud itself. And ultimately, putting out in the cloud for your, all your applications, right? You are also being concerned about the risk, the security. And of course, uh, being said that InfoSkill Solutions, we actually provide the Unifier Drills capability, still the same as what you have seen at on-prem. And we are, you are also able to provide the necessary DR rehearsal from, for your applications, not touching your actual production data. So coming back to this uh, multi-cloud deployments, right? So this main topic that we're actually focusing on today. So going back to the, the multi-cloud survey reports that we have made out of, right? So 78% of the customers are actually deploying their applications in more than, than the public cloud providers out there. So if you talk about InfoSkill benefits, right? So as what, what I've mentioned in the previous slide itself, we're able to achieve the resiliency, the high availability across, be it whether it's at on-prem. So if let's say at on-prem, you want to migrate your data across to a particular cloud provider, you're able to actually do that, right? And of course, uh, by actually migrating your data, right? Doesn't mean that all your data are actually migrated across. You are still having a subset of your data, right? Still at on-prem. In any case, if you don't feel comfortable in putting out your data, there's still a way of repatriating the data back onto on-prem itself. And of course, uh, being said that once you are actually assured of the confidence level, of the comfort level of putting out your application data over in this particular cloud provider, you might also want to look at a, a different cloud provider. So that's where InfoSkill solution also comes in using the same mechanism. So be it whether it's uh, using our replication, our Veritas volume replicator capability, right? We are able to actually seamlessly migrate the data across. So being said that uh, for those customers, right, that is having a three-tier architecture of your applications itself, right? There is still this capabilities, right? That we are actually confident and we are still very proud of, which is the virtual business services that you are able to actually put across all these multiple tier layer of, uh, of uh, applications or services into one single logical service, service mode itself. And when it comes to the fail over approach, right, they will actually seamlessly migrate across the entire app services or application across in its entirety. So it can be rest assured that when all this fill over or migration occurs, right? When you actually bring up the applications over in a different environment. So it, the applications and workloads work, work as per it is, right? So this is what we want customers to, to feel confident about. So ultimately the business values that we want to give up to customers is of course, uh, keeping up with the ever changing business needs. Right, and of course, uh, in terms of future proving the technology, so whatever technology that you want to get your application or workloads out to, right, and of course, ultimately, right, we also we also need to make sure that we meet the customer's SLA, and of course, uh, to avoid and prevent any system outages, 
wherever they put out their applications, their data, their workloads out to, such that we are helping customers to manage the risk as well as to protect the reputation of their brands whenever that they actually port their applications or workload to. So, uh, so uh, we come to the portion of the use cases. So I just have two use cases that I've made up for today's session, right? So one of these example is of course on resiliency itself. So this uh, US manufacturer, this customers that we're having, right? Okay. So as of current, uh, previously before putting out their applications over in the cloud, they're having their application at on-prem. So, so, okay, so being said that uh, they, they are previously or, as, or previously not our customers, they are not utilizing our info skill solutions, right? So even at on-prem itself, they are actually sharing out their data, right? Via NFS, right? To this uh, SAP applications that they are putting out to the physical servers out there, right? So, so of course, uh, we're actually for this architecture itself, we are actually seeing a single point of failure, right? So, so being said that uh, besides the NFS share that they're actually putting out to, to share the storage across, across this uh, SAP nodes itself, right? And we're also seeing that if let's say that there's something that happens to the respective server, right? There's no such mechanism that will be able to actually notify them on what is going on in the background. And of course, uh, ultimately, right? The customers have actually decided to actually migrate their applications over to the cloud itself. So being said that they have actually gone through the same kind of journey, the cloud journey. So they are also trying out different tools, right? That may out there to actually migrate and uh, to migrate their data across uh, to the cloud itself. But they know that uh, it's actually not easy. They're actually having a hard time, right? By using all the manual efforts of, of, of getting the, the, the requirements out from the different tools itself. So eventually they actually turns to us, right? Whereby we actually put out a POC environment for them. So we actually we actually implemented our info skill solutions for their SAP applications over in the cloud itself. And of course, uh, once the confidence has been assured off in a, 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 a single region over in the cloud itself. So we actually move over to setting up the secondary site for their applications in another region. So ultimately, right, they are saying that uh, we actually, the, the InfoSkill solutions actually prove the, the values and the benefits that we want them to actually get out of. So it's actually to remove all single points of failure, right? And of course, uh, being said that uh, in terms of the, the shared storage, so there isn't such mechanism over in the cloud. So we're actually utilizing our flexible shared storage mechanism, whereby it's actually running on, on cluster file system to share out the data, be it whether it's the applications in one single region or be it whether it's on the other region itself. So of course, uh, the second use cases, right, that we are seeing is, is actually in terms of migration and mobility. So this is actually a defense contractor out in the US itself. So, so we are actually trying uh, to actually helping them to avoid a specific cloud lock-in, right? So of course, uh, previously, right, before they actually put out their cloud, uh, their data, their applications onto multiple clouds, they are actually migrating and fill over, they are actually utilizing the AWS cloud as their DR site. Right, so such that they are able to actually move the application, fill over the applications from on-prem to, to AWS, right? But of course, uh, because of security reasons, uh, they, are, they are actually not able to replicate back the data, right? Or to migrate to any other cloud. So this is, uh, this is all uh, before using our info skill solutions, right? They're, they're using some kind of other third party solutions out in the, in the industry itself to, own, to replicate their data. So it's kind of like it's a, a one way mechanism. So they are not able to actually reverse replicate their data from crop over to on-prem, right? So of course, uh, after that, right? So when they actually spoke to us, right? So uh, we actually 
let them see what the, the benefits, the, the values that InfoSkill is able to provide within the single cloud provider out from AWS itself. So once they are assured of the, the feel over, the, the resiliency, the capabilities out from InfoSkill, right? They slowly actually subscribe to another cloud provider, Microsoft Azure out there, right? And they actually tested out the utilizing our Veritas volume replicator to replicate the data across. And they are also tested out the field over as well as the DR rehearsal by using our, our fire drill solutions. So ultimately, right, all this actually reduce uh, in terms of the, the ingress cost because uh, you know when you actually move the data, retrieve the data out from the cloud, right? You will be actually bounded by the egress cost itself, right? And of course, in terms of our replication, right? So we are actually providing the replication in a block level mode. And of course, it's also in an incremental manner as well. So all this, all this sort of uh, replications, uh, all this fill over capabilities that we have out for InfoSkill, right? Actually reduce the migration time as well. So it's actually just a minute. So of course, uh, we also do provide a user interface for customers to maneuver the manageability of their applications as well. So you don't have to actually use, use a command line method if you are not comfortable with. So just by using the UI itself, you can actually dictate where to fill over your applications onto. So of course, ultimately, right? So we talk about all this, all this, uh, all these areas that we are actually seeing out from InfoSkill. And of course, in terms of the use cases itself. So we are actually having the agility out from all this infrastructure. So be it whether you are actually subscribing to a specific cloud provider or a, a different cloud providers, right? So we're actually extracting, extracting the data out from what, what your applications is running on. So of course, our uh, info skill, right? Being said that, uh, is there for over twenty five years already. So, so it started out as storage foundation, right? So as the old name actually refers to. So eventually, we actually changed the name and put it out to info skill. So of course, uh, being said that, of course, this twenty five years itself, we have actually grown alongside. So in terms of the technology trends, the changes as well from the physical environment. To the the the, the so-called the simple kind of storage that you're actually making out your applications to reside on, the direct attached storage to send storage and from Unixers to Linux, right? And of course, from physical to virtualized environment, that, that all these trends are actually at ongoing, right? And of course, nowadays with the trends on board onto the cloud itself, so we are also helping customers to achieve what they actually wanted out from their applications, right? In a seamless manner to avoid all this, prevent all these system outages. And ultimately, they can be assured of the confidence that we're actually putting out our info skill solutions to them. Okay, so I've come to the last slide. So, yeah, so you're just wondering, uh, Amit, is there any uh, questions that is posted out in the QA? Any interesting ones? Uh, there were there were a few questions. Uh, I would actually check with KK and Vinay if they wanted to bring in any question. Um, Vinay, KK, anyone any question that you thought was not worthy to discuss here in the broader forum? Uh, so one question that I felt uh, we should discuss more is uh, Jacqueline, uh, the capability mm -hmm. that InfoScale has across all the clouds like which cloud vendors we support because uh, it's, it's, it seems from the queries, it's not clear that whether we work in AWS or Azure or both or GCP or something. So if you could just cover that a little bit, that'll be great. Uh, which cloud vendors we support and kind of the operating systems and how we do that uh, deployments across. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Vinay. Yeah, so, so yeah, so, so yeah, so that's one question that I'm expecting as well. So we actually support all the, the three major cloud providers out there, right? So be it whether it's AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud Platform. So we do support all these three major cloud providers. So being said that, so in terms of the OSs, right? So whether it's uh, whether it's uh, Red Hat Linux, Ubuntu, right? Or even uh, Windows itself. 
So our info skills solutions are capable of running, running on those platforms as well as of the what the cloud providers are actually providing out. Jacqueline's point, uh, we also support OCI, which is Oracle Cloud. Yes, yeah, that's right. OCS as well. So, of course, uh, if, if customers want to go into a specific cloud providers, they can actually check back with the local account team, right? As to whether do we support, do we provide the capability out of our info skill solutions. But typically, right, so, so be it whether whatever cloud providers, right, even from the major cloud providers that we're actually supporting our info skill applications, so if you are actually putting out your applications onto a private cloud providers, so we do support that as well. So remember that info skill, right? So it's inherent to whatever underlying compute resources that you have out there, right? So all these things, be it whether, it, I mean, you are actually putting out to a, a specific storage manufacturer or even a specific cloud providers providing a specific cloud, uh, storage offerings, right? So we actually do support any one of those as well. Brilliant. Thanks, Thanks. Jacqueline. Thanks for the answer. Thanks, Jacqueline. Uh, there, there is one, one more question or a part of the question that was intriguing, uh, Jacqueline. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the question said that, what is the difference between backup in the cloud with backup software with what we have just spoken in terms of you know availability in cloud okay can you can you explain a little bit more on that yeah that's that's a good question right between backup and availability right so it's something similar like between between backup and snapshot right so okay so 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 yeah that is a good question in, in fact right so so in terms of availability and resiliency what we made out of right is to actually ensure the uptime as well as the availability the accessibility of the applications out to your end users, right? But of course, uh, in terms of all these availability resiliencies that we make out of, right? So we we cannot actually guarantee, right? The so called the the so called the protection of the data. So imagine if let's say your data is corrupted, right? From a single site, from a single cloud provider, and then of course, uh, you are actually replicating the the corrupted data across from one site to another. So basically in terms of the origin of your data is already corrupted, right? So when you actually replicate the corrupted data over on the secondary site itself, they will still be receiving the same kind of corrupted data, right? But of course, uh, that, that, that's where it actually comes to the point that uh, you actually need to have a backup, a data protection solution to cater to your to protect your data in case of such corruption actually occurs and of course in terms of system outages itself because when it comes to system outages right although that we can we might be able or we are able to actually fill over the applications and time right it can be running out in the so-called the secondary site but of course uh, sometimes right due to certain certain time uh, that, that uh, certain so-called long downtime that was being out from all this all this uh this this application due to the outages itself right it comes to a point that uh the data might be inconsistent right in a way so you, you probably still need your last line of defense whereby it's actually your your backup to be able to actually restore back your data to the normalized state so to, to have it up and running in a in a in a in a normal behavior, right, and to serve out to your end users. So, Ami, does that answer the questions? Yeah, I was I was talking on mute. Sorry, it, it actually answers that question. But then, um, the other other element or the other perspective of looking at backup and availability is, um, you know, the service level agreement or the SLAs. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, can you? That's right. Yeah. Yep. Can you can you uh, talk about what sort of SLAs can InfoScale um, provide, and you know how different can uh, are those when we talk about a backup strategy? Sure. So putting aside the the corruption of the data itself, right? 
So Infosphere itself is, is capable of meeting the near zero RPO. So in, in terms of the replication itself, if, if let's say that there isn't such, such corruption that happens to the data, you're able to actually replicate the data in a seamless manner. And across over on the other side itself, you're still able to actually get your data in the timely manner, right? So, but of course, when you talk about backup, so typically backup, right, is the last line of defense. And in terms of the, the amount of time taken to actually backup the set of data, right, out from the applications, right, and to be able to restore it. So all these things actually takes time, right? So, so the, the, there is a difference between in terms of the RPO as well as the SLA that we're seeing. So in terms, if let's say you need the, the highest availability, the resiliency out from your application needs, right? So you, you definitely have to actually opt for a, a, a HA solutions like our info skill. But of course, if you want to be assured that in case in any event, if let's say there's any data loss, any corruptions that actually occurs to your data, you actually need to restore back your data. Yeah, I mean, sorry, I, sorry again, I'm on mute. So that's yeah. that's spot on, um, Jackie. So, you know, depending on what your SLAs or application requirements are in terms of uptime, you know, you can or you should choose InfoScale and a backup strategy uh, with Veritas Net Backup. You know, we have an ability to now have, you know, a near zero recovery time or an RPO, as well as, um, uh, you know, a, a longer uh, RPO or an SLA for workloads that are not super critical. So you can achieve the best of the world, both worlds by having multiple SLAs assigned to a single workload or segregating your workloads in different SLAs. So that's, you know, interesting. Uh, I think we had one more question around, uh, you know, the support. So, Maybe, maybe what we will do uh, is, you know, when, when we finish this session, you know, we will post out a few links that talk about InfoScale, uh, you know, as, as a solution and how InfoScale in multi-cloud environments work through. Uh, those will be data sheets. We will publish the support matrix. So just in case if you have questions or queries around, is my application supported or can this be done? You know, those links will help. and. Uh, having said that, you know, feel free to reach out to us on this email address, as you can see here on the uh, screen, asr.team at veritas.com. Feel free to reach out to us to, you know, either ask us a question if you have a point in point question with a very, uh, you know, clear perspective or use case in mind, feel free to send that. If you want us to help you validate a few things in terms of if there is an idea or if there is a solution that you're trying to run in your mind and you need some Veritas guidance trying to validate if this is the right direction or will this work, you know, feel free to write to us and we will, you know, get back to you. And also if there are any other additional topics that or challenges that you are facing, which we have not spoken about today, but in general re relate to data management or cloud migration or, you know, hosting applications in cloud, uh, we would be more than happy to see if we can help and, you know, have a different perspective given to you if if that helps. All right. So having said that, I don't see any other questions coming in. Uh, I think we are almost at the top of the hour anyway. So thank you, uh, Jacqueline, Vinay and KK for uh, running this, this session today. Uh, appreciate your uh, insights and really thankful for your time. Uh, again, also all participants, thank you for joining in. Um, appreciate uh, you, you know, coming to all the tech drop-in sessions. We will have our tech drop-in session coming in uh, in about three to four weeks from now. Um, you know, we will publish the the link as well as the content and the topic that comes out for that session. So stay tuned and thank you all for joining today. Stay safe, and we'll speak to you uh, next time around. Thanks. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank, bye you. Bye. thank you, everyone. Bye. bye. bye.